Okay, today we're going to use a banana to stim simulate a blood draw. The reason why it's uh, good to use a banana to do a blood draw is with this banana skin, particularly a, a banana still has some green. Along the ridges, we can simulate what we might feel as we stick or incise a human when we feel that little pop or give into a human's vein. It's good to use a banana for this. Okay, the supplies you'll need to do a banana blood draw is you're going to need hand sanitizer, you're going to need your tourniquet, you're going to need your banana, preferably a green one, you're going to need your PPE, in this case it would be gloves, you're going to need your alcohol swabs, 70% isopropyl alcohol, and then you're going to need your vacutainer needle and your tubes. We we'll also need our two by two gauze and we'll need a pen to label with when we're done. Well, I have my biohazard box nearby in arm's reach and I also have an extra needle and extra set of tubes in case there was complications or a loss of suction. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my hands. This is important always to wash your hands before and after every patient. And when using an alcohol wash, we need to rub our hands vigorously until the substance is dried. If you was washing your hands with soap and water, you'll need to sing Happy Birthday song twice in your head to wash your hands long enough. Okay, so my hands are dry now. Now I'm going to don my gloves. Make sure that you have a good, tight, snug fit. Now, as you see, with most of my gloves, my tips, my fingers are good and snug in the gloves. I don't have too much excess on the fingertips. In phlebotomy, you need a good, tight feel against your fingers so you can palpate the vein easily. Okay, so I have my gloves on now. Now I'm going to take my tourniquet, and this is my pretend patient, Mr. Banana. I've already ID'd to him, compared him to the requisition that the doctor issued. The ID matches up, and I have informed consent from the patient. So now let's go ahead and begin with the procedure. I'm going to wrap the tourniquet around the patient, or around Mr. Banana here. And in this case, we're not going to be able to tie the banana all the way, because tourniquet would be too rough on a banana. So we'll simulate this by just laying over the tourniquet. Okay, So I have my tourniquet on, then I begin to palpate. And as we palpate, we use our two non-dominant index fingers, and we go over one side, filling over, coming back across, and picking our vein that we'd like to use. So we'll pretend that I'll go right here. Okay, And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a landmark. You can use the body skin, such as freckles, little pimples, as a landmark, or you can take your little thumbnail and just press gently to make a little mark to save your spot. So I found my landmark. Now the next step is, as a new phlebotomist, until you pick up your speed, you'll want to release your tourniquet for a minute. As you cleanse your patient, take your alcohol swab. You're going to go start in the center where you want to do your puncture and go in a circle method inside out. Never back in. We want to push the dirt away from the side. As that alcohol swab is drying, I'm going to go ahead and assemble my needle. While I am assembling my needle, I'm checking to make sure that it's still in date, and it is. And the seal was intact. I'm going to tear off the end of the multi-sample needle, insert it into my holder, tighten carefully, Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm checking to make sure that my tubes are in date. Also, I checked previously, my needle is in date. We need to, needles can expire, their sterility can expire, so we also want to check the label on the needle too. Make sure the needle ladle, the paper sticker, is intact, which this needle is good. This date is good on the tube, and the date is good on this tube. The most common thing that would happen with a tube being expired is they lose their vacuum suction. So you do not want to use expired tubes due to that fact, and you would not want to use expired needles 
because the guarantee of them being sterile is no longer there. All right, so uh, alcohol is already dry on our patient. Let's go ahead and place our tourniquet back on. Okay, uh, with my non-dominant hand, I'm going to anchor the vein. And by anchoring the vein, you take your thumb, you gently press down and back a little bit to pull the skin tight. With my dominant hand, I'm going to take the needle, release the cap, check for any barbs or shards, anything out of the ordinary on the needle, make sure it's completely perfect, and it is. I'm going to hold my needle with my safety cap pulled back, my thumb on top, and my two index fingers below, and I'm going to stick. One, two, stick. Okay. Now I'm in my vein. I'm going to let go of my anchoring. My non-dominant hand is going to do the work now. I'm going to insert my blue tube in first with the label side down. You want the label down so you can see the blood come in. And for this demonstration, obviously we're going to pretend we have blood flowing into the vein. So it's full. I'm going to pull it out. Gently try not to let your needle move. And you're going to invert this slowly three to five times and set that down. Then you get your next tube, needle down. All right, we're pretending it's filling up with blood now. This will be our last tube. So before we disengage this tube, we're going to release our tourniquet, disengage our needle, or excuse me, our tube, invert it three to five times. You want to invert your tubes slowly, three to five times each, depending on the chemical. You don't want to shake it rough. When you shake it rough, this causes hemolysis. You want to go slow, gently inverting the blood into the chemical mixture. Set it down. We want to pinch our gauze and fold over again in four corners because we need to make a pressure bandage. And I have that ready. I'm going to pull out my needle and immediately cover with gauze and safety cap all in the same motion. Okay, so as you pull your needle out, you want to immediately safety cap your needle and go directly into the biohazard box. You never want to lay down on the table. You just immediately go to the biohazard box, drop the needle in freely, and be careful not to stick your finger into the container. We never pull needles back out or any trash back out of the biohazard box. So I'm holding direct pressure on my site for a few moments. I have my tape already torn, ready to go. And we're going to bandage our patient. And we want to make sure that we have a good tight seal. You want to make sure it's tight on the bottom and tight on the top. And that's how you can practice doing a phlebotomy blood draw on a banana. All right, and as the very last step of phlebotomy, after you've bandaged your patient and disposed of all your equipment and your patient's safe and not bleeding anymore, you want to make sure to label your needles, or, or excuse me, label your tubes with the patient's name. And this time, it would be banana. And you also want to put today's date and your initials. This needs to go on every tube that you draw. And then we'll put this, I'll label the other one, banana, my initials, and date. All right, and then both of these would go in your lab specimen bag. There are ver various different styles available. And then you would transport this down to the laboratory, either by the pneumatic tube system or hand carrying. And that's the last step of the phlebotomy blood draw.